Oh, howdy everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at this Walders Proto Jordan Spreader. I know we've got Reflection City going on here, but this is the box of the Walders Proto line. It was redesigned, I think a couple of years ago. We're just going to roll into this thing since it's a rolling stock review. You guys have been asking for more rolling stock reviews. It'll be pretty short and to the point as I multitask and try to get the video length down a little bit. So, Jordan Spreader goes back to the 1890s. And it says right in here, side wings are delicate, open and position carefully. So I'm just going to let this fall into my hand. Here. That was a brace, luckily, for the truck that just popped off. I'm trying to pull the other one off there. So two braces for the truck inside, a little bit of literature inside. Just talking about the history of the Jordan Spreader. But I'm going to talk about it based on what I learned today. I like learning about railroad equipment. Because if I keep learning about it as these reviews go on, then eventually I will be a walking encyclopedia of this stuff. I don't think I am yet. But anyway, Jordan Spreader started coming to be on the railroads as early as the late 1890s. And uh, when I first saw these, I'm thinking, okay, these are just snow plows. But actually, the Jordan Spreader did a lot more. Uh, it would actually dig ditches. It would even out ballast. And eventually, they did adopt it for snow plow service as well. So it was a multifunctional tool of the railroad. And with like I said with history all the way back to the 1890s now on this model as you can see you do have the plow on the front here with a coupler dual beam headlight Walders has several road names of these with different headlight configurations and different configurations of the back end as well based on the road so the operation of the wings the wings are operational on the real thing, it's a pneumatic operation. So I've just spread the wings here. They seem fairly durable, but they do, you know, you don't want to rip at them or anything. You do have some fine plastic pieces. I believe Walders had mentioned that there's over a hundred pieces on this model, piece of rolling stock. So very detailed indeed. Looking at the rear, you see the crew access area. You've got a brake wheel stand, a tank there. I think that's an air tank for pneumatic operation. Stairs going up to the cab. And then on the back end, you can really see all the intricate detail and all of the different pneumatic operation areas and arms. There's a word that's escaping me right now, but you get the point. So very, very cool. These even adjust up and down. So they have thought of it all on this model to make it mimic the actual operation of the real Jordan spreaders. Now Jordan spreaders are still being used on the Canadian Pacific Railway. I did find a recent video as late as like just a few years ago with a Canadian Pacific one. I think there's some other ones that are in maintenance of way service around the country. So I believe if you're wanting to be a modern modeler, they did make a Canadian Pacific version. They made a flat yellow version. They made a BNSF version, which is probably my favorite with conspicuity stripes. Cons however you say that. It's been a long day. The yellow stripes, the reflective stripes on the... on the... FRA mandated rolling stock and locomotives but uh, that's probably my favorite in appearance is the BNSF I may pick one of those up as well later on see if I can find it in stock anywhere these are sold out through Walders I believe if not all the road numbers most of them so you're gonna have to go to your dealer network either online dealers or brick-and-mortar hobby shops to find this so that is about it in terms of detail. You see the windows there in the extended cab, plastic inserts there as well, horn. 
There are different horn configurations based on the road type. You got metal wheels with the trucks. And I will just pick this up in the middle here. Hopefully that's durable enough to do at that point. And you can see the bottom there. So pretty cool looking. We're going to put it on the track and see how well it rolls around and stuff. Alright, as you can hear in the background, I've got track power applied. That is a different locomotive, but the reason I'm demonstrating this to you is so that you can see that the lights are not operational on DC or DCC. So I did have questions about that before, and I wanted to answer that in this review. When it is on the track, it is very free rolling. I could tell once I had the trucks on the track because this thing will take off on you. And you do have to be very careful with the width, especially if you have a double main line, or more importantly, if you have some delicate railroad crossing gates or anything. As you can see, I've currently got that extended past where this gate would be, so there could be damage done if you're not careful. Especially these have these tiny little wires, just hair thin wires that could do damage. Very cool, very functional model. You've got the Proto Max couplers on this as well. Those are metal couplers, Walders branded. And we will check wheel gauge and coupler height here in a moment. And we'll check weight too so you know what you're getting into. But right now on the track, you've got it very free rolling. All right, I'm kind of kicking myself because I picked this up to do the wheel gauge check before I did the coupler height check and that front set of wheels is a little difficult to get on the track because all of the body details that sit low. There's not a world of clearance there as you can see. This area right here is a little hard to get on the track. Might recommend a, a railer, whatever you call those, where you load up rolling stock on the track. I want to say re-railer, I don't know if that's the right word or not, but these are all engaged with the NMRA standards. We'll check coupler height here. All right, coupler height check. You be the judge. It appears to be a, a little low, just at an angle. I have a heck of a time seeing what you see because of my offset appearance from the camera. So I'm relying on your self-scrutinizing eyes to make the call. This side appears to be straight on, but again, you be the judge. Try to get a little bit of a zoom here, but I was having a problem getting the camera to stay focused on the couplers. Right, have you ever seen those cheesy infomercials where they say, but wait, there's more? There are adjustable flaps on the sides as well, as demonstrated here. They do, have to, they do appear to have a spring tension. There's also inside this area, I'll show from a different angle, a crew entry ladder into the cab door behind the plow, and another air reservoir or tank, I believe, for pneumatic operation. Here's a little top-down peek at what I was just talking about. Everything seems to be constructed pretty well. Tiny bit of glue spots on this tank here. But other than that, looks very, very nice. Walder's definitely filling a need in the hobby with these and making them operational goes to an additional step. That should make modelers pretty happy. So there you have it, the Jordan Spreader. Very cool. I think it's a good price for what you get. All those different parts, how they all function. Everything seems somewhat durable, even though there are some intricate details here. So very nicely done, uh, well executed by Walders. I like the road name variations and how smooth everything runs. Overall looking pretty good, looking like a great product. You can always add DCC or DC lighting yourself. It looks like fairly simple, so not bad at all. That said, I'm going to leave you with a run by of this. I don't really have the appropriate attire for this run by, but We'll get something in the works, something small and short, and we'll see you next time right here on my channel. Take care.